Ingo. Huh? Thought it was time what? for one minute with Ingo. Uh, one minute? I thought it's five minutes. <laughs> All right, one minute then. Or five, or something in between. I was actually taking a nap because I was waiting for my auto model results from Rapid Binder to, to finish. And those machine learning algorithms, they have been taking a really long time. So why is that sometimes the case that those algorithms run for so long time? And in other cases, they are pretty fast. So I would like to explain to you now how you can estimate how long those algorithms run and what the difference between the different algorithms are. But before we get there, let me introduce something to you we computer scientists call big O notation. So here's a simple example. I have a couple, a bunch of numbers here, 7, 3, 6, 3, 2, and so on. And I don't know, like, well, I actually do know how many numbers I have. I have n numbers in total here. Um, let's say my task would be to count how often the digit 3 occurs in this number. So obviously it could start here, like, well, that's not a 3. Here we have a 3, so 1, 2, and so on, going through all those numbers. And if I would do this, Like, how many checks would I need to do? I mean, like, how many numbers do I need to look on, to look up to determine how many threes are in the sequence? Well, if I have n digits, I obviously need to do n different things, like n checks, n times I need to check if this number is a three or not. And if yes, I increment my count. So um, that's why we call this, like, well, we give this, this big O notation here. We say the order of magnitude this counting algorithm needs, we call this O of n. So because we need to look at each element exactly once. And that's something very, very um, common in computer science. But this is also a worst case um, notation. This means, so for example, if I would know that the digit 3 only occurs up to five times, up to, I don't know if it's less than five times, but it's definitely not more than five times. So I could, for example, the second I reach the fifth 3, I could stop counting. So even in the worst case, Well, I still need to go through all the n digits, but I don't need to do this every single time. So the worst case here is I need to look at all the numbers n times. So that's for just counting. If I would, for example, sort the sequence of digits here, well then it's a different number. So like, for example, I could sort it by comparing the seven to all the other numbers. So I do the n comparisons and I do this again for the second digit and so on. That would be a pretty naive sorting. There are better ways to do this. But if I do that, then I have a quadratic runtime, a big O notation of n squared. So after we have introduced here this year, so this is one way without really looking into the implementation details to tell uh, other people how long in a worst case scenario an algorithm actually takes. So now let's have a look into those common machine learning algorithms here. Let's start with knife base. What do you think is the runtime of knife base? So in order to say that, you would need to know how a knife base actually is working. And knife base really is just going once through all the data um, rows and building averages or counts up uh, the different values. So we do one data scan. If you have n rows and n columns in our data set, well, if you only do one data scan, the total runtime is O of n times m. That is the runtime in O notation for knife base. So k nearest neighbors is interesting, because k nearest neighbors doesn't train at all. And while you could argue you need to store the data, but let's argue the data was already stored before. So the runtime for training is actually Yeah, it's constant. It's, you don't need to do anything for Kenya's neighbors. But when you do the scoring, then again, you need to go through the full data set for every single example you score, every single row you score. That's pretty expensive for scoring. If the data wasn't scored, then even the training would also take n times n. Those are the fastest algorithms we have. Um, things get unfortunately a bit worse from here. So in case you wonder why those things take too long, well, here are a couple of reasons. Linear regression, there's a lot of matrix uh, multiplications and inverses uh, involved here. So for n rows and n columns, it takes n times m squared plus m to the power of 3. And that explains to you, while, while it's still half of k to a run linear regression if you have a lot of rows, it really doesn't scale well if you have a lot of comments. It was, just takes too long then. So for example, for text analytics, um, that's part of the reason why linear regression, because they took, you have a lot of columns there, is not no longer very good. Uh, SVMs, in general, are a little bit different here. SVMs are really linear in the number of uh, columns here, but they are unfortunately cubic in the number of rows. So if you have a very wide data set, which is shorter, not too many rows, SVMs are gen in general a fast feed for that. So now let's go to the tree-based algorithms. Decision trees, they are quadratic in runtime for the number of rows and linear in the number of uh, columns. Well, and if you have multiple trees, like in, in random forest, for example, we have the same for every single tree times the number of trees. So th I think that's important to know. So if you have a certain data set, let's say millions of rows, but only a few columns, well, then you should go with algorithms which are in general linear 
or at most maybe quadratic in the number of rows. But if you have like a wide data set, well then just don't don't, don't go with the, with the learning scheme like this one because it would take too long. If you want to learn more, well there's charts in the web. You will find certainly more information um, uh, somewhere where you can really see like, well, this would be a linear time that's in general is considered good. N log N, like most sorting algorithms are good as well. But then quadratic or even exponential runtimes, they are really getting crazy. Don't ask me what a neural network really has. I mean, that depends on the implementation. But in general, it's just not really good. Um, yeah, that's why, why we typically paralyze them and run them on GPUs and others. I hope that was helpful. Bye.